everyone. Welcome back to the Recession Resistant Real Estate Radio. I'm your host, Brandon Cobb, co-founder of HBG Capital. And in today's episode, I want to talk about why college has become a complete scam. If you're somebody who's considering sending your kids to college, hang tight. You're going to want to hear this. But before we do, if you get value from these videos and these episodes, please like, subscribe, and share our podcast episodes. All right. So, College, in order to understand why college is currently a scam, it's good to do a brief history of how we got here. 60 years ago, when you got out of high school, you went to work for a company and you basically worked for them your entire life. You got a pension and you were able to have something set up for your retirement. Now, that's a thing of the past. I don't even think anybody does any pensions anymore. And we've had this existential boom happen in the last 50 years where people are now becoming privy to the need to have a purpose to live, something to do. They want to make an impact. They want to work from home. They want to be autonomous. They've gotten very smart to the fact that, hey, I don't have to stick around. There's a lot of other opportunities out there. If this current opportunity with this current employer is not what I want, and it's created quite a fiasco in the workspace with a lot of attention on the uh, on the millennials kind of disrupting things and, and being quote unquote very needy. But things aren't how they used to be. And so back, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, if you went to college, you were bettering yourself. That degree meant something to an employer. It meant you can have more money. It meant you have specialized knowledge. There was this almost putting the degree on a pedestal if you will. And so the general consensus with the population was if you have a college degree, you are something special and we need to hire you. And this stayed the same for a pretty long amount of time. And you started to, I call it the college bubble. Everybody started sending their children to college, uh, you know, especially here in the United States. And it created an oversaturation. Now it's almost the norm to send your kids to college, have them graduate, and then they're competing with a bunch of other people that have a college degree. So the whole idea and why it was valuable back, you know, 30, 40 years ago was it differentiated you. It said, hey, I did something that everybody else didn't. I had a four-year goal that I set. I wanted to invest in myself. I wanted to invest in my education. I wanted to invest in my mind. And those were the core values that these companies were looking for, not necessarily the college degree. Fast forward to today, you don't have that same differentiation. The degree does not provide the same amount of value. Now, I'm not saying that it's not good to invest in your mind, but there are better ways to do it other than college now. So here are the four main reasons why college is now a scam. And I'm gonna, there's always exceptions. There's like six degrees that I think are gonna be worth it. And we're gonna talk about those too, if you wanna go down that path. But reason number one is return on investment. There is one main reason, argu arguably two. The main reason is to make money, right? You wanna send your kids to college so that they're financially successful and they can, make the world a better place. And two, you want them to invest in themselves, their mind. You, you know, you can't take an education away from somebody. It's very good. Nobody's arguing about that. But the main reasons to make money, it doesn't matter how much you invest in yourself and your mind. If you're hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and you're making $40,000 a year as a school teacher, I don't care what it did for your mind. You have pretty much screwed yourself for the rest of your life going into that kind of debt for something that was not a return on investment. So the number one reason is ROI. The average college tuition at minimum costs $50,000 a year, all the way up to $250,000 a year. That does not include interest payments. It becomes exponentially larger when you introduce the seven, eight, nine, 10% interest rates that students are going to have to pay on these loans and interest rates are currently as of the time of this uh, writing uh, is they're going up. So it's only going to get more expensive to go take out student loans. Now, what would be a good ROI? So let's just break down some basic numbers here. If we know that we're going to graduate 
on the low end, let's say it's $50,000 worth of debt. I can guarantee you that it takes anywhere between 10 and 20 years for people to pay off that debt on average. Let's just stick with the best case scenario here. And you're paying off that $50,000 worth of debt at a 7.5% interest rate over 10 years. That means that you're going to end up paying close to $85,000 by the time you get done paying all the interest on that loan. So you're really not going into $50,000 worth of debt. You're going into $85,000 worth of debt. And the average income earned after college is $68,000 a year. But it's not because after you pay Uncle Sam what he's going to get, you're really only left with making about $52,000 a year off of that $68,000 a year income. So what this basically means is there's not enough money for the average income of $68,000 a year after graduating to cover your payments to pay them off over a reasonable amount of time. It's going to take you 15 years. If you're only making $68,000, you are going to pay a ton of money in interest, and that is going to cost a huge amount of opportunity cost, which is the next thing I want to cover and why college is a scam, the opportunity cost. So when we go to college and we end up paying $80,000, $85,000 a year if we're able to pay it off over a 10, 15 year period, we go into debt. What that doesn't account for is how much money you could have been earning while you were going to college. In other words, if you had a job and you were working for four years without any debt, and you were saving money and you were investing money, what does that look like? And if anybody's ever seen the compound effect of making investments over time, you know that the earlier you get in, the larger it grows to down the road. There's a really interesting chart where Dave Ramsey showed how compound interest works for he did two examples and put them right next to each other. He did a 17 year old kid who put $5,000 a year into his Roth IRA for six years. And then he stopped at the age of 23 and he let that compound at the normal market rate, call it like nine and a half percent. And then he took a second example of a 20, I think it was like a, a 30 year old. I want to say a 30 year old who put $5,000 a year into his Roth IRA and let it compound at the same rate. And he put $5,000 in over 25 years. So which one do you think had more money in their account? The 17 year old who started from 17 to 26, put five grand a year for six years and then stopped. Or do you think it was the 30 year old who put $5,000 a year in for 25 years up until he was 55 years old? Who do you think had more money during or after that compounding effect. And the chart doesn't lie. If you do the calculations and you actually look at it, it was the 20, uh, the 17 year old kid ended up having more money at the age of 55 than the uh, guy who started at 30 just by getting in earlier. So those first years are absolutely crucial. One of the worst things you can do is go into a lot of debt as a young person because you, you are at your peak age of being able to work and make money. You're going to get your, your peak age of making money comes later on in life because you've acquired the skills, but this is where you work to build your skill set. The main reason you should go into the workforce when you graduate college is to learn a skill. It's not to get an education guys. It's to learn a skill that is going to make you valuable to the marketplace so that you can make money. That is the main reason. And the opportunity cost of going into all this debt versus making, saving, and investing money at those first initial stages when you're actually able to make money is absolutely huge. It completely cripples young people. Now, the third reason it's a scam, and this has a lot less to do with college and more so to do with how our culture is set up, is parents don't dictate what they need to go to school for. And I've seen it all the time. I have friends who have graduated with communications degrees. Then it's not valuable. You don't make any money with those. I've had friends who 
thought they wanted to become a psychologist and they studied psychology in college and then come to find out that that degree is completely worthless in the job market. They're going to school with no direction. Parents are basically saying, hey, this is your time to figure out what you want. We support you. You know, we're, we're going to let you go into all this debt without a game plan. Now, to tell an 18-year-old kid, hey, go figure this out. And by the way, every single year you're accumulating $15,000 worth of debt. And it's really not $15,000. It's more like $22,000 after the, the interest kicks in. And you pay all that back. Is absolutely insane. We do not need to be doing this to our, our younger generation. It's absolutely ludicrous. So no one, and what's happening is a lot of people realize like two years into school, I've been doing this communications degree or this social studies degree or family studies degree or whatever that's completely worthless. And they've gone into all this debt and they realize like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. Or, oh my gosh, there's not, gonna, there's not a market for this afterwards. And so they drop out. And what they've done is they've just just gone into all this debt and they've dropped out of school to figure it out. And that just needs to stop. So that that alone, if you're not if you're don't have a game plan for going to college, then you need to um, at least major in some kind of degree like finance or accounting or engineering, something that actually has real life skills that you can apply and is valuable in the marketplace. Now, the fourth reason, and after this, I want to go into some of the degrees that are actually are worth it because there are some that you do need to hire education in order to go out and do. And a lot of people are very passionate about these careers, and that's important. We need these people in society. So we're going to touch on those, but there's not very many. I'm talking like it's like 5% of what's, what's offered out there. And then I want to go over what I would do instead and what my plan is for my children. The fourth and final reason why college is a scam is the socialization. You're sending your child whose brain has not fully developed into an environment where they're most likely going to be partying all the time. They're going to be doing drugs. They're going to be drinking at least three or four times a week. Um, you know, they're, they're discovering their sexual identity. They're going to having a lot of sex. And some of these things you're not going to be able to do a whole lot about. But to send your kid into an environment where they basically can go into debt to drink and do drugs and have sex all the time is just not good for that generation. I think that a better tool would be make them work a very hard manual physical labor job before going to college, have them party, have some fun, show what it actually costs to go do that thing before them actually entering college. I think it'll really set their mind where they need to, because in my, their head, they're going to be like, wow, if I don't major in something that's worth a crap and learn a skill, I'm going to have to be laying sod for the next 25 years. And this hurts. I don't like the sunburn. I don't like the, I don't like how hot it is. I, I remember when I was six, no, I was 17 years old in high school, I worked for my uncle's HVAC business and I was basically an assistant. I got paid $8 an hour. And I remember crawling up underneath the homes with the dead rats to hang the, the duct work and run it to the correct vents underneath the house. And I remember wrapping the duct work with insulation and it was like a hundred degrees outside in Memphis, Tennessee. And the insulation had fiberglass in it and that fiberglass would get in my skin and it would just itch. So I'm like hot, I'm sweaty, I'm itchy, I'm underneath a musty house. Uh, there's dead animals all around me. And all I can think about was, oh my God, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life if I don't get a good degree. It's the best thing that could have possibly happened to me. Uh, I won't even go over spending all the time in the attic during the summers because that was just an absolute nightmare. But one of the best things for a young person is to have them work a super hard manual physical labor job to really hit home the value of an education and using your brain to work and not your body. Don't send your kids off to college for the socialization. There's much better ways to do it. Don't put them in a party where they're doing drugs and drinking all the time. I joke that they're there is a very fine line between a between being a bomb loser and being a college student. And that fine line is graduation. Because if you take somebody who's in school partying and having a good time, but they're studying for higher education, getting their degree, oh, that's just normal. They do that. 
But if you take somebody who has a job and they're drinking all the time and they're doing drugs and they're partying and they don't really have any direction, they're not studying for anything, they're a bum. They're a loser. Difference is graduation. So what degrees is college worth? Well, as you know, if you want to be a doctor and we need doctors in society and doctors, that's a skill and they're very highly paid, you need to go to medical school. You need to have a degree for that. If you're a lawyer, if you're an accountant, there's there's several other degrees that work out beautifully in the event that you do pursue higher education. These make sense, but make sure that it's what you want to do before going down that path. In other words, if you're wanting to potentially be a doctor, go shadow one as a freshman or better yet, a high school student. If you're thinking about being a going into finance and you want to be a financial advisor, go ask to shadow one several weeks for several weeks and just see what that job entails. Make sure that you want to do the job before you spend all this money and go into all this debt to do it. Because the worst thing that can happen is you change your mind. You don't want to do it. I know somebody who racked up six figures of debt in law school and he took four years of law school and then realized he didn't want to be a lawyer because he really didn't like law and sitting down and reading a bunch of legal work and doing paperwork. Like that would have been really nice to know. And he could have figured that out four years earlier had he just gone and shadowed a lawyer. So take that into consideration. All right. So what should you do instead? What is the game plan? If you're somebody who doesn't want to send your children to college, if you do think it's a scam, but you want to set them up for success, here's what I personally am going to do with my children. I was very blessed to get a job doing door-to-door -door sales. Uh, I was very introverted. I was very shy. Uh, at the time, I was still uh, learning who I was. And this was a great time for me to go out and learn how to sell alarm systems door-to-door. -door. And so I spent the whole summers in between college semesters doing that, working uh, Monday through Saturday, the, uh, you know, the whole three months, door-to-door -door learning how to sell products. And that foundation of learning how to sell a product was a very valuable skill. Turns out in the marketplace, people want people who have door-to-door -door sales backgrounds. They want somebody who has experience being able to take a product and selling it. The marketplace values sales or the skill to sell at a very high level. And it's what eventually ended up um, me getting into medical device sales and you know i learned a lot in that industry that set me up for my real estate success so have them go learn a skill instead now here's what i would i'm going to have my children do my children will be starting a business when they graduate high school and i might start out with something basic um but the idea is to get them in the entrepreneur mindset as soon as humanly possible because that's really the only way they're going to set themselves up for big financial success to really be able to make enough money to give you know them the, the life that they want and and not be stressed about money you have to figure out ways to make money for yourself or at least additional income streams if you do have a job so i will have them start a a particular business and in that business i'll kind of help i'll coach them through it this will be like the masters and they'll be working 12 hours a day in their business trying to grow their business and I'll have them, instead of me paying for their college or have them going to college, I'll make them pay for a mastermind. You know, masterminds on average can cost anywhere between $10,000 and $30,000. That's still a lot cheaper than what college tuition would be. And you get real world experience and exposure to other entrepreneurs in that particular business that are killing it and on the same journey. So seeing is believing. So if you can expose your children to other people who are succeeding in whatever industry uh, they're wanting to start their business in, that is what's going to really set them up for success. And that's what I will be doing. If they want to go into, they want to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, I'm going to have them shadow one first, make sure it's what they want to do before they go into that path of getting into tons of debt. Um, anyway, hope this provided some value and gave you a little bit of direction if you are someone who's considering sending your kids off to college. Till next time.